Hi guys, so for our color unit, we're gonna be talking a lot about optical illusions. And optical illusions are not just things that you see in trick posters or trick books, but there's, it's actually an art movement. And so we're gonna talk about both today, all right? So let's just start off by having a little fun, okay? In this slide, how many black dots are in each image? I just want you to think about it, okay? Just take a moment, look at it. So the answer is actually zero, okay? This is an optical illusion. The placement of the black squares along with the white circles give the illusion when your eye is looking across the picture that black dots appear, but there are actually no black dots in this image. Are the lines in this image straight or curved? If you said straight, you are correct. They are absolutely straight. It's just the placement of the black and white squares, the way that they're staggered, that give the illusion that these lines are not straight at all. Is the blue side of the cube the front or the back? This is actually a trick question. It depends on how you're looking at the cube. Okay, if you're looking at it as this rectangle right here is the bottom, then it would be the back of the cube, okay? That would mean that this is the bottom and then this would be the front, but it could also be the front. So this could be the front, this could be the bottom, and this could be the side. It's all on how you look at it. What shape do you see? If you answer diamonds, you are incorrect. There is not a single diamond on this picture. This is an illusion. The placement of these rectangles give the illusion that there is a diamond in the center of this picture, but there is actually not a diamond found. What are the black spots that you see? What are the black spots? So I actually tricked you. I wanted your eyes to focus on the black spots. Now tell me what the white spots are. Another tool of optical illusions is that you can get the viewer to focus on something you don't want them looking at. But if you look at it, it spells out the word lift. L-I-F-T. Which sphere is bigger? If you said the one in the back, you are incorrect. They are exactly the same size. It is the placement of the brick walls that give the appearance that this one is bigger because the walls are closer to it. They are actually identical in size. Is this picture really moving? The answer is no. Not only does the color of the black and white on each side of this oval help with the illusion, but the shape. So they start out as a perfect oval in the middle, and then as they go towards the crease, they become smaller. That gives the illusion that this is actually growing and shrinking. Where are the people in this picture working? So once again, this is kind of a trick question. It's an illusion because you could see different perspectives. So they could be working on the ground, they could be working on the roof. It's all in the way that you look at it. Do you see these pictures moving? Obviously they're not, but once again, the shape, the color, the size of the squares can give the illusion that they're actually growing out at you. So let's talk about a modern uh, op artist. This artist's name is Julian Beaver. 
and he does some amazing sidewalk art. And the way that this is an optical illusion is because you have to be standing at just the right place for this illusion to work with your eye. If you were to walk by at a different part of the sidewalk, you wouldn't notice these three-dimensional shapes. You wouldn't notice how that works together at all. Okay, so we're gonna talk about op art. What is op art? Op art is an optical art that uses patterns to create movement or illusion. For example, artist Bridget Riley created this painting. And no, this was not done on a computer. She completed this entirely by hand. So you have to kind of think, what subject would you have to be really good at besides art to create accurate op art? Probably math. It involves a lot of shape. It involves a lot of measuring. It involves a lot of precise things, right, in order to get this illusion to work. Optical art uses patterns to create movement and illusion. It also uses value, so there's usually a light and a dark contrast. It uses pattern where it repeats different elements, and it uses rhythm and movement, so it gives the suggestion of motion through the use of various elements. Let's talk about some famous op artists. Victor Vassarelli, he was one of the pioneers of the op art movement. He was the first, he created the first op art painting in the 1930s, but it did not gain popularity until the 1960s. I want you to think about that for a minute. The 1930s, when we look at his artwork and how revolutionary it is, okay? If I were to look at these artworks and not know who Victor, Victor Vassarelli is, I would think instantly that these were created on a computer. No one knew what a computer was or was going to be in the 1930s. He created all of these paintings by hand. Here's some more of his artwork. Now let's talk about Bridget Riley. Bridget Riley gained popularity after she exhibited alongside Victor Vassarelli at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. Here are some of her artworks. Here's what we're going to do for our first project. You're gonna create a op art drawing with a color wheel, right? Because we're focusing on color, okay? So this is what we're going to start today. 